Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. And today I get to do something really, really exciting. Something I've been waiting for close to a year to be able to do. And that is to introduce to you Cultra Tech knives out of Russia. Now, what you're going to see here, you've already seen the pictures of the knife, so it's not like it's a huge surprise, but what you're going to see here is something that I found to be absolutely amazing in every detail so if you're just waiting to hear if it's a good knife and it's worth buying you don't have to sit through the rest of the video go buy it do what you got to do to get it they're absolutely jaw-dropping awesome now to get to the details as to why let's start with the packaging first and foremost you know it's fine to, to, to get a knife in a zippered pouch or in a plain white cardboard box and a lot of people don't care about packaging but for me it's part of the initial experience of ownership and this has got to be the king of all packaging. I've really never seen anything done uh, to this degree and with so many goodies included. So first, you get this custom-made handkerchief. Looks very, very high fashion. Then you get a microfiber cloth. Not too uncommon with a good high-end knife, but it is a nice touch. Then you get to the actual box itself. A really nicely made wooden box with a magnetically affixed lid yeah check this out so you've got the magnets here and here or I'm assuming one of the two of these are metal plates and two of them are magnets so nicely engraved plaque in the lid which uh, yours won't come like this when I cut open all of the packaging I sliced into it my bad then you're going to get your certificate of authenticity and it does show everything in Russian. So you may have a hard time reading that. Uh, but at least you get to, to read that it is M390 steel at 63 Rockwell. That's insanity. True insanity. Now, let's get to what you're going to get inside of the box. Nicely, nicely cut out box. I really dig this. It's uh. <laughs> Again, it's very, very impressive packaging. First thing that you're going to notice that's uh, kind of strange is that you're going to get two titanium dice. Yeah, titanium dice. Now, it sounds kind of silly. Uh, I've actually seen titanium dice being sold on, like, Arizona Custom Knives and other sites like that for, you know, $100 and more, and that's just part of your included packaging. So if you're looking for something interesting I think that's a really cool uh, really cool. I don't know if they're one side is a logo so they're not actually as usable as you'd probably like them to be focus there we go but hey they're still really really cool then you're going to receive a custom machined pivot tool which you'll need if you ever want to adjust the pivot because it is proprietary hardware Look how many custom makers and how many production companies make proprietary hardware and either do not offer you the tool for it or they charge you an absurd amount of money. These guys include it in your purchase price. So there is that really cool packaging. They did it just a phenomenal job. I could not possibly applaud them more. I think that is really, really, really cool. Now, this video is going to go in a couple of different directions. One, we're going to talk about the knife, of course, obviously, because it's uh, friggin' amazing. And secondly, you'll notice if you've ever tried to search online anything about Cultratech, you can't find anything. And the very few resources that are out there, if you can't read Russian, and Google Translate doesn't do such a really hot job, um, then you really don't know what you're buying, especially for this kind of price. You need to know. You want to understand, am I buying a custom knife? Am I buying a production knife? I don't get it. I don't understand who's making it. But we're going to get into all that here. But let's start talking about the knife first and foremost. What you're looking at is 9 inches overall, and that M390 blade is a full 4-inch blade. Now, the cool thing about this is it does not carry like as large of a knife as it really is. It's very lightweight. It's very compact, but it doesn't feel too skinny. So you're able to carry a nice full-size 4-inch blade in a very compact package. 
take a look at it from all angles here before we do the close-ups and we'll talk about the detail work what you're looking at here is a wonderful combination of titanium and carbon fiber beautifully machined so let's start by taking a good look at the handle and the hardware notice all of the beautiful cuts that have been done in the carbon fiber the way everything has been milled and contoured so what you're starting off with is the titanium frame it is a liner lock so you have a full titanium frame on top of that you have an overlay of absolutely gorgeous void free carbon fiber then that has been milled out and inlaid into that onlay is a section of milled titanium the hardware again which is proprietary there is your pivot and there is the other only other exposed piece of hardware uh, these are also titanium that have been bronze anodized the backspacer look at the detail work in the backspacer and that extends outward to a lanyard opening there you have your pocket clip which is milled to look just like the millwork in the titanium inlays it's a deep carry pocket clip and while I typically despise a uh, a deep carry pocket clip this one I found is very easy to extract out of the pocket no issues whatsoever you'll see the jimping around the tail end of the frame there's your stop pin massive massive stop pin low profile flipper tab but it's not hard to get a hold of at all and as you see very smooth action and here's the crazy part because you're looking at it going oh wow that is super smooth that's not on bearings that is on washers I was amazed to discover that now look at the finish work on the blade as you guys know, I've mentioned this many, many times, I am not a fan of a stone wash blade. But this is a polished stone wash. So, you get the effectiveness of the stone wash finish, which is to mask any normal everyday wear. And you've got a nice high polish to it that allows it to look very high end. Then you have the milled out section here. Look at this. Look how they've done this. Just gorgeous. The notches that have been cut into the spine. The fitment of everything is fantastic. Take a look at the tip alignment. Very nicely done. Just clean work all the way around. And yes, I really, really love that backspacer. Very slick. Now, they do three different models. This is the Zvarn 2, which I believe translates directly to Swan. So it is the Swan 2. It's a larger size knife, but very, very easy to carry. They do a lot of different materials. I've seen some with Mokume inlays and all kinds of really crazy exotic stuff. And ever since I first saw culture text postings on Instagram I went wow I've got to have one of these knives and the first thing it's gonna pop out at you is well it kinda of, sorta of looks a little bit like a Shurigorov how close is it to a Shurigorov let's let's go ahead and put that out of the way right now Shurigorov comes in three levels you have the mid tech you have the uh, what do they call that it's it's they're custom, but it's not the full custom. It's not called custom shop. Uh, I'm blanking on the term that they use right now. But So you have the mid-tech, the custom shop, and then you have the full, full customs. So you know, your mid-techs are between 500 and 1,000. Uh, those uh, custom shops, which again, I'm using the improper terminology there. I apologize. 
you're going to spend anywhere from $1,200 to closer to $1,800, $1,900. And then the full customs are $2,000 to $4,000 and $5,000 and up. This I place solidly right there at their middle section, which is really what this is anyway. It is a custom, but it's made in a series of uh, multiple knives. When they first began doing their knives, they were doing, uh, I believe it was 30 knives per run. Now, because of their popularity, they've increased their run to 50. Does that make it a production knife? Well, that's really going to be up to you to decide. We'll talk about how they're made, and you can make your own determination. I consider these more mid-tech, uh, excuse me, above a mid-tech, more into custom, and here's why. As I explain the story uh, of Maxim and, and how he runs his business, I think you'll come to understand that. But what I've done is I've gone back and forth in emails with Maxim. And a uh, little tough to translate there because he speaks Russian, but he did a very good job of bringing uh, everything to light in the best English that he could. Let's talk about what he responded with. So I'm going to read this off. I actually have a big old printout right here. This is directly from Maxim. He says, uh, we are a three-person shop. So, first off, you have three individuals, period, that's it. It's not a sole proprietorship like we see with most custom knives, but it's a small shop with three people. He says, I was fond of knives and weapons all my life while serving in the Russian army. Uh, and I served 15 years, and knives really kind of became my hobby. I always felt the need to have good knives. There you go. Uh, he says, after I left the Army, there was uh, more time for the hobbies that I wanted to enjoy, so I began to study engineering programs, uh, foundations of metalworking, and began to create my own knife designs and tried to make them. But it was still a hobby, and at some point, I decided to quit my full-time job and make knife production my sole income. It's kind of a big deal. It's a big jump to make. Uh, he says, I then invited two of my friends to join me as partners. Now, I would try to pronounce their names, but unfortunately, I'm going to butcher them. Uh, first one is Valentin Zinchenko. That one's the easy one. And then, I, 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 I'm sorry, I do not know how to pronounce this. It is spelled Y-E-V-G-E-N-Y. Uh, Yevegny uh, Soltamiradov. So, and again, the, the owner's name is Maxim Soltamiradov. So he invited them to join him as his partners, and they wanted to incorporate different technologies into the manufacturing of each of these knives. So what he did was he started by creating 3D models, again, because he's studied all that engineering, and he was using professional-based engineering programs. All the designs were completely created by Maxim. So there is another tick in the column for custom made. So it is three people. Everything is done in-house, including the design work. So again, that's where I lean more toward custom. The production of each part is accompanied by a large number of technological transitions, which include the use of both universal metalworking equipment, so manual work, and CNC machines, but all details are ultimately finalized by hand and the grinding of the blade and assembly are completely manual operations. And to achieve such an easy, oh, so this is where his broken English comes in. I'm going to kind of uh, paraphrase it a little bit for you. Um, he wanted the action to be as smooth as possible, so he chose washers also for the durability as well. Some people feel that bearings uh, can inhibit the performance of a blade that's being used on a constant basis. So if you are of that mindset, you will certainly appreciate this. Those of you that only buy bearing knives because they're faster and smoother, you're going to love this knife too because the way this is done on washers, it's you, you almost can't tell that it's not bearings. It's that good. Uh, in the configuration of the detent, we prefer to make a controlled stall which allows you to press the flipper as you want and not as required by the knife. So what he means by that is they wanted to make the detent action on this where you could light switch it or you could push button it, whatever your preference may be. So it's not one particular style of opening and we all know there are certain knives that really only like to be open in one manner. So the point that he's trying to make here is 
they set the detent in such a fashion that you can open it any way that you want to and it's they feel it's more easy for you to control the force and sharpness in which you have to engage the flipper tap here's the great thing though uh, they actually offer three grades of detent setting light or I'm going to word it like he does so if you're ordering he knows what you're talking about easy medium and strong detent I would consider this to be medium it's certainly snappy enough as you see it is very very fast but it is a little bit on the weak side so if you are like me and you prefer a strong sharp detent don't worry that's part of the options as you order your knife so you have those three choices it says what distinguishes our knives from others is we try to make knives for cutting performance most of our knives have a blade thickness of 3.3 millimeters and reduction at the edge of 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. So what he's saying is he's making slicers. You're getting a, a fair amount of thickness for strength up at the spine. It's a good strong blade. It's not going to chip and, and break and snap on you super easy. But it's brought down super fine to a very, very, very thin area behind the cutting edge. So this is not going to be for hock, uh, hocking, hocking, really? Hacking or chopping. It is basically going to be made more for the cutting performance than anything else. I'll show you the other side of the knife while I'm reading here. Uh, let's see, what else has he got to say on this? Heat treatment of the steel we are doing with one of the best heat treaters in Russia, D. Frolov, which I have heard before, so they, they're taking care of the heat treating and also doing uh, cryo quench as well. So each of these are cryogenically treated blades as well. He talks about the deep carry pocket clip because he wants the knife to be less noticeable in the pocket and still get a secure attachment to the pocket. Uh, another thing that he, he wanted to point out, and I was going to bring this up anyway, but it's good that he brought it into the uh, conversation. A lot of people may be under the erroneous assumption that the onlay and inlays are simply glued to the frame. They are not. All of this is done with hidden hardware. And I don't know if you can quite see inside. You see the CNC machine pockets for lightweightness. Um, I don't know if you can quite see the hardware. I can't see it in my viewfinder here, but maybe you can. If the camera decides to focus. Uh, but all of the hardware is inside of the frame to attach all of these. So none of your onlays or inlays are ever going to come out. Uh, they're not glued in or anything like that. It is all done with their hardware. Um... It's talking about the proprietary hardware and the fact that you're going to be getting the tool that's on there. He says, uh, if you want to do full maintenance, just unscrew the two nuts, and, uh, which is going to be the pivot and the bolt in the back. Then you remove the left side plaque, as he calls it. So you would, uh, from the inside, you would remove this. And then you'd be able to do all the service and cleaning that you would need. Should any gunk or anything get up in there. And he says, you cannot reassemble this knife incorrectly everything was precision machined so that it only goes together one way that's kind of a big deal for anybody that's ever been worried about taking their knives apart uh, that is a big deal especially when you're spending thirteen fourteen hundred dollars on a knife like this you don't really want to mess anything up especially because if you did mess it up it's got to go back to russia Woo! it's a long wait time and you're risking losing your knife in transit so that's pretty much uh, everything that he wanted to say. Um, my, my thoughts and comments are this. Because they are designed in-house, everything by Maxim, because every individual component down to their screws are made in-house. All of the assembly, all of the finish work is done in-house. I prefer to call this a custom. Now, because they make as many as 50 of each knife, you may want to call that something else, but it doesn't matter how many are made. The fact that it is uh, just them doing the work, doing all of the CNC machining, all of the hand fitting, all of the polishing, uh, all of the work that's being done, done by hand and done in-house, I prefer to call it a custom. So that's probably the biggest question that people have when they first come ac across Cultra Tech Knives is, well, am I buying a production knife? mid-tech knife or a custom uh, you can certainly put your own label on it 
I prefer to call it custom just by the way that they're doing all of the work. As I mentioned, the action is just fantastic. The feel in the hand is exceptional. It's a very clean, smooth design, but it does not feel slick and slippery as you might expect. You've got a premium steel in the uh, Bowler M390. It has a laser sharp edge, one of the sharper knives that I've owned in my collection. All the detail work is exceptionally done. There is not a boring section on this knife, and that's a big deal for me. When you're spending this kind of money, uh, again, thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars, you don't want to look at the knife and go, "Oh, it all looks great except for the pivot," or "It looks great except for the backspacer," or "The lock side is boring," or "The pocket clip is cheap and chintzy." There's none of that to critique here. I have inspected this knife as closely as I possibly can. I have not found a single flaw. Now, I don't want to bring another knife maker's name into it, but uh, I did walk into a friend of mine's shop recently carrying this knife. Uh, he is a prolific knife maker that's uh, very tough on critiquing knives. And I handed it to him, and he couldn't find a flaw either. I mean, there's no machining marks. There's nothing. This is as perfect of a, a knife as you could possibly hope for. Uh, and he was extremely, extremely impressed with this knife, as am I. So as I mentioned before in previous videos, since I don't buy the amount of knives uh, that I used to buy, I'm very, very particular about the knives that go into my collection these days. I am exceedingly proud to have this in my collection. I love carrying this knife. I love flipping it. Everything about it is just fantastic. Yes, you will have to jump through hoops to be able to buy one. I apologize for that. I am hoping they get some North American dealers very, very soon because this is a knife that I truly believe everyone needs to experience. If you're a true high-end custom knife collector, you like this style of knife, you like the complexities of the design, very futuristic looking, I highly suggest you do what you can to get one in your hands. Don't forget also, they will be here in the U.S. at the Blade Show in Atlanta. You'll get a chance to touch and feel them and buy them for yourself in person and speak to the man who's making them.